In this video, we're talking about creativity in engineering, if it's required for you to have a successful career, and the benefits if you are a creative person, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If this is your first time here, guys, and you wanna be a successful engineer, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. I received this question today during the live stream. Thank you so much, again, for 5,000 subscribers on this road, 1% Nation. I really had a fun time with that two-hour live stream. If you missed it, don't worry. I included all of the chat within the video so you can go back and watch it like you were there. Also, if you have a question that you want to be answered in the next live stream, make sure you leave it below in the comments so that I can incorporate that into future live streams. I'm pretty sure we're doing more in the future. So if you wanna see more live streams, go ahead and leave that in the comments too. I've been getting questions about creativity in engineering. If it's required, particularly engineers who are not sure about civil engineering versus architecture, and even engineers who are going into electrical or mechanical or aerospace engineering, they're concerned, they're not sure, they're torn. A lot of society has told us that if you're an engineer, you need to be all out math and science and don't worry too much about creativity, but that has been debunked. The left brain, right brain research shows that most of us are sort of this hybrid type of thinker, that it's very rare to find an exclusively left brain thinker or an exclusively right brain thinker. Yes, they exist, guys. But please don't put yourself into a box when you're choosing a career, when you're choosing the right college major, or if you are trying to find reinforcement for your own decisions based on whatever you have done to lead you to this moment right now, don't worry. But stereotypically, a lot of engineers are not that creative. We do have a tendency to be more math-minded, more analytical, more spatial thinking, and therefore we may not have the deepest creative elements. We may not be able to think outside of the box which is not the best that society teaches us that we don't need too much creativity. But if you are somewhere in the middle, if you are someone who's torn between say civil engineering and architecture or some sort of artistic design or actually becoming an engineer and you're concerned that maybe being an engineer is not gonna allow you to be creative or you do actually excel in math and science but you're just caught in this sort of confusing storm you're not sure, I highly encourage you to continue to pursue engineering. So this video is gonna talk about five advantages if you're a creative person. And number one is that you will be unique. Because most engineers are actually not so creative they have this heavy emphasis on the left brain side, mathematics and analytical thinking, spatial thinking. If you actually can think outside of the box, if you actually can be creative, you're going to stand out. You're going to differentiate yourself from other engineers. So it's good to be different. I talk so much on this channel about the importance of standing out. How can you differentiate yourself from all the other engineers? So if you do have that creative edge, if you can think different, it's a big win. You're gonna be able to solve unique problems. You're going to be able to find solutions for special instances within your designs and within your homework problems, your project problems, your internships, your job, whatever. So don't worry, being creative is a huge advantage. It makes you special, special is good. And the second benefit is because you have that uniqueness, you're gonna bring that diverse viewpoint and mental positioning when solving problems to your team, to your job, and therefore your input, your opinion, your ideas are gonna be even more highly valued because you are different. And this is because most managers understand the importance of a diverse team meaning if you have a whole bunch of left brain analytical thinking on one team and not anyone creative, then they're all gonna be just thinking the same way. You want somebody who's gonna question whether they're doing the right thing. It's like, hey, okay, this is more cost effective, but are people actually gonna use this product if it doesn't look a little bit better or we didn't solve this problem or that problem, we didn't think about this. So your opinion is gonna be more valued if you're a creative person. The third benefit here is that you will actually be able to create creative designs that are aesthetically pleasing, that integrate into the rest of the system, whether it's a building out there in infrastructure, or if it's a component within a robotic system, you're actually gonna be able to have this holistic view and not just really look at, okay, well this works and these lines match up and this is cost effective or whatever. You're gonna actually be able to have that different sort of macroscopic view on a problem that a creative person is gonna be able to see, whereas an engineer, they kind of, again, put themselves in this box and as long as the piece works, that's all they care about. They don't really see things as a whole. They don't really see the aesthetic advantage of certain things. So you're gonna be able to design a little bit better. You're gonna be able to look at things differently. And furthermore, it's just gonna allow you to stand out and have a higher voice, a better opinion, and gain more respect and probably help your team deliver better projects. And you're gonna maybe get promoted because you think differently and you're 
your views are respected and your designs are a little bit better. Benefit number four is that you will be a part of this movement that we call STEAM. STEM is old and boring now because science, technology, engineering, and math without arts and creativity and design, we have found that that is just obsolete. We need the union of creativity. We need the union of aesthetics and actual functioning engineering. So this type of thinking, this combination of arts and creativity and design and engineering is what we want for the future of our engineering world. And if you are a creative person and you continue on to become an engineer, which I believe you should, if you find yourself torn, then you are again gonna be ahead of this wave that is now this emerging aspect of steam. So you are literally gonna ride this wave and can say that you were steam before steam was cool because it's blowing up right now. So you will be a part of this trend. So don't worry, still become an engineer. It's a great fit for you if you're a creative person. Engineering is still an awesome match because of this steam movement. And benefit number five with creativity and engineering is I think that you will have a better handle on your career and be able to steer the course of what you want in your life versus again, putting yourself in a career box and not really looking at all the opportunities that present themselves to you in your life. For example, what I mean is, if an engineer is not really sure about what's going on with their career, they may not be creative enough to think, well, maybe I should go back to grad school and study something different, or maybe I should start my own business, or maybe I should go to the public sector if I've been in private sector my entire career, or maybe I should reach out to my network and think about how I can use everything I've learned in engineering to do something totally different in a different sector, in a different industry. And I just don't think that all engineers think like this. Again, they might just start hating their jobs and just transfer to another company that does the same thing, thinking that it might be different when realistically, a creative person understands that unless you deploy something dramatically different, your career, your life, your trajectory in your professional world is not necessarily gonna change unless you actually change what's wrong. And sometimes that does mean changing industries. Sometimes that does mean changing sectors. Sometimes that may mean going back to school to do something that's in education or law or something else. You want to be a creative thinking engineer in order to unlock these full potentials because otherwise you would just get stuck in a rut, which is what I see a lot of engineers doing. I see lots of complaining, lots of crying on Reddit because you're not thinking outside of the box. You're not actually using that problem solving mechanism that should exist as an engineer because maybe you have been told that you're not that creative to solve a problem in a different way that you never expected. So those are the top five benefits that you can have if you're a creative person in engineering. So if you are not sure if you're good enough to defeat the math and science courses in high school and you can survive year number one, year number two in engineering and you still are a creative person, don't feel like you are someone that's going to have a disadvantage because of that. It actually puts you in a massively advantageous position. So continue on to be an engineer, follow your dreams, and you'll have a great career, particularly if you listen to all the suggestions in these videos. And if you enjoyed this video, guys, you think it helped you, and you want to be a successful engineer, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. If these videos help you guys, share them with a friend. Make sure that you leave a like and comment because it helps the videos rank on YouTube. That's how you can give back to 1% Nation, and thank Thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers lately, guys. If you have a question about your engineering journey, make sure to leave it below. Find the link in the Facebook group so that you can join the tribe, the Knights of the Round Table. And as always, thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% Engineer. Cheers!